Enumerations, usually just called enums, are a way for you to define your own kind of value in Swift. In some programming languages, they are simple little things, but Swift adds a huge amount of power to them if you want to go beyond the basics. Let's start with a simple example from earlier. We had func get hater status with a weather string returning an optional string. And we'll say if weather is equal to sunny, then return nil, uh, else return hate. And then end the condition, end the function. This function accepts a string that defines the current weather. The problem is, a string's a poor choice for that kind of data. Is it rain, rainy, or raining? Or perhaps showering, or drizzly, or stormy? Worse, what if one person writes rain with an uppercase R, and someone else writes ran, because they weren't looking at what they typed? Enums solve this problem by letting you define a new data type, then define the possible values it could hold. For example, we might say there are five kinds of weather, sun, cloud, rain, wind, and snow. If you make this an enum, it means Swift will accept only those five values. Anything else will trigger an error. And behind the scenes, enums are just simple numbers, which are a lot faster than strings for computers to work with. Let's put that into code. I'll say up here, enum weather type, case, sun, cloud, rain, wind, snow, then end the enum. And in our function, we're now going to say this thing accepts some sort of weather, but only one of a weather type, sun, cloud, rain, wind, or snow. We can no longer check against a string, like equals equals sunny makes no sense anymore. So we're gonna say weather type dot sun, return nil, otherwise return hate. And now go ahead and call get hater status with weather being weather type dot cloud. So let's take a look at those first lines again. We have this enum weather type, which gives our type a name, weather type. This is what you'll use in place of string or int in your code. The next line defines the five possible cases our enum can be, as I already outlined. Convention has these start with a lowercase letter, so sun cloud with an S and a C being lowercase, for example. And then at the end, we have this line here ending the enum. Now take a look how it's used. We modified the get hater status function so it takes a weather type value. The conditional statement also got rewritten to compare against weather type dot sun, which is our value. Remember, this check is just a number behind the scenes, which is lightning fast. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and make some small changes. First, I'll move these cases down so they are one per line. Case sun, case cloud, case rain, case wind, and case snow. And then our comparison here, I'm gonna say just dot sun. And similarly, when we're calling this thing, I'll say dot cloud. So there are two real differences there. First, each of the weather types are now on their own line. This might seem like a small change, and indeed here it is, but it becomes important soon. The second change was that I wrote before, if weather equals weather type dot sun, and now I'm just using dot sun. I didn't need to spell out I meant weather type dot sun, because Swift knows I'm comparing against a weather type variable, so it's using type inference. Enums are particularly useful inside switch case blocks particularly because Swift knows all the values your enum can have, so it can ensure you cover them all. For example, we could rewrite our get hater status method so it uses switch case instead of the conditions, like this. Switch weather case.sun return nil case.cloud or dot wind using a comma return dislike and then case dot rain definitely returning uh, hating at this point so we'll return hate now uh, obviously 
haters gonna dislike is hardly a great lyric, but it's academic anyway, because this code won't build. Swift's complaining. It doesn't handle the dot snow case, and Swift wants all cases to be covered. You either have to ha add a case for it, or add a default case. One of the most powerful features of Swift is that enumerations can have values attached to them that you define. To extend our increasingly dubious example a bit further, I'm going to add a value to the wind case for weather, so we can say how fast the wind is going. We'll say enum weather type, then case sun, case cloud, case rain, and case wind, we'll say speed int, and then case snow. As you can see, the other cases don't need a speed value. I just put that into wind. Now for the real magic. Swift lets us add extra conditions to the switch case block. So a case will match only if those conditions are true. This uses the let keyword to access the value inside a case, then the where keyword for pattern matching. I'm gonna say uh, func get hater status, weather, some sort of weather type, returns an optional string, switch weather, uh, case.sun, we will return nil, case.wind, let speed, where speed is less than 10, return meh. Then case.cloud and dot wind, so all other wind values, we will return dislike, and then case.rain, or dot snow will return good old fashioned hate. So that is our new switch case. So you can see wind appears in there twice, but the first time is only true if the wind is slower than 10 kilometers per hour. If the wind is 10 or above, that won't match. The key is that you use let to get hold of the value inside the enum, i.e. to declare a constant name you can reference. Then use a where condition to check. Now I should say that Swift evaluates switch case from top to bottom and it stops as soon as it finds a match. This means if we'd had our case cloud or wind check before case wind let speed where speed less than 10, then it will be matched and executed instead and the output changes. So please think carefully about how we order cases. Pro tip for you, Swift optionals are actually implemented using enums with associated values. There are two cases, none and some, with some having whatever value is inside the optional.